G'day, g'day everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Gov's Hero Review Videos. Today we are looking again at the Hunters or the Monster Hunter Heroes. Specifically, we're going to take a look at the five-star legendary purple heroine, Barbie, the uh, fierce monster annihilator. So Barbie is available for summons as we saw from the Monster Island portal, which comes around roughly once every eight weeks. The portal itself has some pretty average odds let's be honest there is only a 1.2 percent chance to summon any event hero um and those odds do drop off because there is no featured hero so if you're going after someone specific you don't have great chances of getting them in perspective if you were to do 100 summons in this portal you would have a 70 percent probability that you could get any monster island legendary hero but if you were targeting a specific uh, five-star hero from this portal, you would have only a 13.9% probability of getting them in those 100 summons. So not great odds if you're chasing Barbie specifically. Barbie herself, she was added to Puzzle Combat during the initial appearance of Monster Island uh, way back in February 2022, alongside the majority of the other heroes in this portal. Portal was expanded in March 2023 with three additional new heroes, um, which were Magma, Marrow, and Torrent, um, but Barbie was added, as I said, with the original five or the other four uh, event heroes. In terms of her specific artwork, um, there's a copy of Barbie there, so we can take a look at this artwork. I do say her because there is that, you know, typically feminine uh, enlargement of the chest region. Uh, I'm sure other people have different opinions. I've heard a lot of people call uh, Barbie a him, but this is the artwork. So, uh, Monster Annihilator, so we've got like a, whoops, not Vasquez, not Breakthrough, where are we going? Um, we've got like a siphon, laser, energy gun thing. Uh, there is a monster that's sort of been um, spitted on a backup cannon, I think, uh, over her shoulders there. Um, so yeah, kind of cool little artwork piece, I guess. Uh, feel free to pause it if you wish to look in greater detail. Um, back to the portal. So Barbie is a member of the Hunter family, which grants her an increase in healing when there are multiple unique Hunter family members in the battle. So specifically, if you have two, three, four, or five unique Hunters, they will gain an increase of 10, 15, 20, and 25% healing. Uh, emphasis on the word unique. Uh, it has to be two different heroes. It can't be two copies of Barbie. Uh, it's got to be someone like Barbie and Jaguar or Barbie and James Saw as examples. Generally speaking, I find this to be one of the worst family bonuses. Um, there's not a huge amount of synergy to the Monster Hunter heroes. Uh, specifically, Barbie's the only hero that actually heals in the Monster um, family, which is pretty average if you're talking about a, a family bonus with no synergy or very little synergy to the heroes in that family. Uh, I personally think maybe if it had something to do with fiends, uh, it might be a bit more... Well, a lot better, seeing as the monster family heroes are the only ones that generate fiends at this point in time. But yeah, increased healing, pretty meh, in my opinion. Um, generally, even without factoring in the fact that there are limited tiebacks to the specific heroes of that family. Uh, the monster heroes, uh, monster island heroes, also gain a bonus when they're used during the monster island event. Specifically, whenever they cast their special skill, there's a 20% chance to apply a one-turn attack delay and a one-turn silence to the heroes that they hit. Um, there is also a passive attack and defense bonus of plus 4, 8, 12, 16, or 20% attack and defense when you have 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5 unique hunter families in the team. Uh, notably that these bonuses only apply when they're used in the Monster Island event. It does not apply at any other time of the game. Not in raids, not in wars, not in PvE. Only the Monster Island event. Her personal stats, uh, Barbie comes in with 688 attack, 735 defense, and 1499 HP. So there is a bit of skewing going from that attack stat towards the defense stat, um, and a little bit towards the HP as well uh, for her age. Her charge speed is set to 38, which is slow speed and requires 12 tiles to charge or six ghosted tiles. The speed break does require plus five to get up to 43 speed, which can be done using uh, either of the purple speed guns in the game. Uh, you can use it using either the plus six Perla scale convex or the plus nine explosion B90. A double break uh, needs plus 12, which can't be achieved even when you're using the Explosion B90 and the 2% charge generation node. As such, the class node has almost no relevance and can be avoided um, yeah, without any loss. 
In terms of her class itself, uh, Barbie is a member of the Sentry class, which grants her the chance to armor up and gain 5% armor after receiving any damage. I don't mind this perk, uh, as it is free armor, and the, uh, the chance can come from any source of damage, so minions, tiles, skills, DOT, whatever, you name it, if it does damage, it can trigger it. The downsides are that it can only proc once a turn, so if you take 15 instances of damage, sorry, 15 instances of damage, there will still only be one armor up. And the other thing is uh, to consider that the medic talent gives um, healing to the entire team, but by comparison, the sentry class only gives it to the one hero. So a little bit down when you compare those two classes. Uh, in terms of a specific emblem path for Barbie, I personally would be going an attack path to try to bolster her damage output. Um, it is quite low as it is, uh, so if we can increase it, we will get even more damage output, which means more healing, which means a better hero. So what this looks like is we are following, as you can see here on Unicorn, I'm following an attack path and prioritizing defense as a secondary skill. So attack, attack. Uh, no attack nodes to pick from here, so I'm going attack and defense because that healing node is pretty well useless. Um, we're going attack again, attack, attack and defense, and then uh, you can see that I did pick up the speed node on Unicorn, but on Barbie, that is not relevant. So you don't need to pick up the speed node and you can just leave it there at plus 18. And that's what I do in terms of an emblem path. So feel free to pause it and review if you need to, um, but that's the way that I would go. Oops. Heading back across to the portal, um, and we'll have a look at Barbie's special skill. So her special skill is titled Energy Siphon, and at level 10 skill and 38 speed, it will deal 165% damage to all enemies, healing all allies for 20% of 25% sorry of that damage dealt. It will then apply a Drain of Fiend to all enemies, which has 20% attack and will absorb up to 21% healing. Um, so 21% of the recipient's HP, total HP, um, in terms of the healing that they receive. Um, the Drainer Fiend will then also heal all allies for 60% of the damage that it does each turn. So, a little bit going on in all of that. Um, sorry, 65% of the damage, not 60%. Uh, so breaking that down a little bit, um, there's a fair bit going on. Um, most of it is damage and healing related, so we can just focus on those two things uh, to some extent. So uh, in terms of the damage, uh, direct damage is quite hard to calculate consistently because of the variation in the damage calculation with randomness, defense stats, all of that sort of thing. What we can do is analogous to the damage output is calculate a hero's attack power, which is their attack stat multiplied by the percentage in their special skill. And in the case of Barbie, that comes out at 1,135. When you normalize it against her 12 tiles to charge, uh, it is not great, right? You can see there it comes out at 95 attack pearl per tile per enemy, which is the second worst of the DOA 5 damage dealers. And that's mostly coming from her lower attack stat and her low percentage in her special skill. Um, you can see that the best one is Sarge. He's got a much higher attack stat and a much higher percentage in his skill. Um, and that's why he's so much better than, than Barbie. Barbie is a little bit interesting though when we move past just looking at her damage output and um, we start examining that healing uh, of allies. So uh, the second line is that it heals allies for 25% of the damage dealt. So it's not a unique ability in the game, but what is somewhat unique is that the healing is actually provided to all allies. Typically these skills, it's only the caster that is healed for the damage dealt, but in the case of Barbie, it is everyone. So if we look at an example of uh, a battle where Barbie has a net attack stat of, six, uh, of 950, so that's factoring in emblems and weapons, her final battle stats is 950 attack. If we then take a defending hero to have a thousand defense stat just arbitrarily, Barbie is going to deal roughly 185 damage to each enemy. So if she hits five enemies, Barbie is going to provide a total of 230 HP back to all of her allies, which is a little bit under half of what a dedicated uh, healer would do without any damage output whatsoever. All right. If you then start factoring in the Drainer Fiend, which is attacking for 20% damage each turn and heals all allies for 65% of that damage, uh, if we take those same stats of 950 attack on Barmy and 1000 defense on the enemy hero, the damage from each Fiend is 12 damage per turn. It's not much, but if it's on all five enemies, it's an additional 40 HP per ally per turn in bonus healing. So over three turns of 
of fiend activity, the total healing that Barbie has provided to all allies, assuming all five enemies are still there, is 350 HP, or roughly 23% of Barbie's base HP stat. It doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to consider that this is healing that's done on top of direct damage to the enemy. So effectively, it's a net HP delta of minus 30 to them and plus 350 to you. So it's a delta of 580 healing or HP points per enemy, roughly. It is quite substantial when you factor that in, all right? It is, you know, a fair whack of damage. So, and a fair whack of healing as well for someone that does both, all right? It's not even then factoring in like the HP that the, the the fiend absorbs himself. So as I said, that drainer fiend has the lowest of the percentages at 21%, but it's on the most amount of enemies. It's on all enemies, all right? So 21% on all enemies comes out at, if we took Barbie's stats, um, sorry, I don't have this figure on hand. Oh no, I do. Um, so if we take a typical in-game HP of 1,350, um, Barbie's Fiend is going to absorb, you know, 284 additional hit points on top of the direct damage and on top of the Fiend damage and on top of the healing for damage that Barbie also imparts to all allies. So when you start getting all four lines of her skill compounding on each other, because it realistically, they do actually work well together, Barbie does actually have a rather large quantity of HP delta that she's doing to all enemies in terms of the direct damage, the healing received, and the healing inhibited. It sort of affects all three aspects of HP in the game, right? To your benefit, that is. So overall, you can't get away from the outset that Barbie is a bit slow, all right? She's 38 charge speed, and her damage is quite low for someone of that charge speed. You do get a lot of benefit from her at that charge speed, yes, but if she was just plus two faster, right? If she was 40 charge speed instead of 38, you'd be able to get that double speed break if you were willing to commit emblems to that class node and put a plus nine speed weapon on her. In that situation, I'd actually say she's, you know, perfect. Like it, it'd be still low, but it'd be manageable because you're getting a double speed break down to 10 tiles. As it is though, she is still highly effective component of an attack team because she does fill both a damage dealer and a healer role. Neither one of them is she like perfect at, but she does do both of them and can support a actual healer, but also still not waste a healing slot without having damage dealing as well. So yes, she's not a specialist damage dealer. She's not a specialist healer, but she does do both of them reasonably well. And then you add on to it that the fiends are doing consistent damage and they're consistently healing her for that damage dealt. Well, not just her, your entire team, you know, it is quite, it is a quite a consistently good combination of effects that Barbie has on her skill. I just, I just wish that she was just marginally faster. As I said, plus two speed, she would be so much better. If she had a base damage of 200%, say, also, it would just be enough to tip her a little bit better on that list and be a better damage dealer. But overall, she is still quite a good good hero in the scheme of things. So for Barbie's grading, I am going to give her a B grade on war and raid attacks, all right? She does, she is quite effective in all of that sort of thing. For war machines, I'm only going to give her a C minus. She doesn't really do too much for war machines um, with her low direct damage output and the low... Um, attack stat. Similarly for events, it's much of the same reasons, right? She's got a low attack stat, low damage output from her skills, so she's not going to be hugely effective in them. Where she really shines is PvE or player versus everything. I don't really have a grading system for this um, that I use anymore, but she is highly effective in that PvE sort of arena of just random quests, you know, Monster Island event stages, um, your map progression, all that sort of thing. That's where she is really, really good as a hero. For her raid and war defenses though, I'm only going to give her a C+. Her speeds aren't the greatest. Her defensive stats are good and the heal for damage is enhanced on a defense team, but there's still a lot of better, faster, more damaging purple options out there. Best position, maybe flank, possibly workable at a tank position, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't probably use her on a defense team if you've got other options. So C+, for raid and war defenses. In the bloody, bloody, bloody battle tournaments, um... 
normally fiends do gain a very good effect but because barbie's effects are all tied with healing for damage and healing is negated in bloody battle she actually goes down a fair bit so i'm only going to give her a c plus for bloody battle attacks and a c minus for bloody battle defenses for buff boosters, back up to a B grade on attack and a C plus on defense. And finally, for charged attacks, this is where she's really great, going from 38 to 65 speed. I'm going to give her an A minus for attack and a B grade for defense because of that big speed improvement. So overall for Barbie, that comes in at a C plus for her attack grade and a C plus for her defense grade. And that concludes the content that I have for this review of Barbie. Uh, as always, these are just my personal opinions on these heroes. I do love hearing your thoughts and feedback on them. So if you think I've missed something or overlooked anything, please jump down to the comments section. I do try to read and reply to as many of you as I can. If you did find the video to be good, useful, helpful and all of that, feel free to like it, subscribe to the channel and whatever. But most importantly, share the video around because realistically, if these, this content is useful for yourself, it's also going to be useful to the people that you play with as well. Thank you once again for tuning in and joining me for this review of Barbie. I do hope I will see you again soon. But until then, good luck, stay safe, and happy gaming. Cheers. Bye.